So hello and welcome to our first video in our study of functional analysis. So some of the questions you might ask yourself is what is functional analysis? And what is the importance? Why should I study it? Okay, so functional analysis is the study of the combination of these four areas topology, analysis, linear algebra, and geometry. So, what are the importance of functional analysis? It has several applications on calculus of variations. Then the whole field of partial differential equations is an application of functional analysis. And it can be applied in signal analysis and data compression. So it has some importance, yes. And it's a pure math course. Okay, so it's quite abstract. So the first lesson or the first thing we are going to do in our functional analysis is to review topological species. You can remember from the definition we said it deals with the study of these four areas, topology, analysis, linear algebra, and geometry. So that means we have to review some concepts under these areas. So we are reviewing topological species. So the definition of topology. So let X be a topological space, a set tau, which is a collection of subsets of X, is said to be a topology on X if and only if these three conditions are satisfied. So the first one is that if the empty set and the full set X itself is in tau. And the second point is that if the finite intersection of elements in tau are also in tau, and the third point is that arbitrary, so whether finite or infinite unions of elements in tau are also in tau, okay. So that's the definition of um, a topology tau defined on X. These three conditions have to be satisfied. So let's just take an example. So we have a set X to be given by ABC. So you know this set X has eight subsets, right? Which is So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so to define a topology on X, that means that that topology will, will be a collection of the subsets of any of these elements that we have here. So, a collection of any of the elements that we have here, satisfying the three conditions that we have outlined. Okay, so for instance, when you take tau 1 to be the first topology, I'm saying the elements in it are phi and x. So you can see that when you take tau 1, for instance, it satisfies the first condition because phi and x are in tau. Then it says finite intersection of elements in tau are also in tau. So for instance, when I should take the intersection of phi and x, I'll get phi, the empty set, right, which is in our tau here, right? So that means the second condition is also satisfied. And when we also take the union of phi and x, the empty set and x, you're going to get x. So it means tau 1 is a topology. Then when it comes to tau 2, we can see tau 2 happens to be a collection of all the subsets of x, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you can see that it will satisfy all the conditions. So for instance, we have this and this being an element. If you take the finite intersection of any of the elements that we have here, you will get it being contained in it. And if you take an arbitrary union to, you have it being contained in it, okay? So, tau 2 is also a topology defined on x. I see, for instance, if you take tau 3, for instance, when we take 
the union of the set A and the set B, we are going to get AB. And AB is not open here. It cannot be found here. So that means this is not a topology defined on X. So tau 1 here is a topology defined on X. And it is the smallest topology we can have. And it is called the indiscrete or trivial topology. Okay, so the indiscrete or trivial topology has just two members or two open sets. The empty set and the full set X itself. Then the tau 2 that I define here is what we call the discrete topology. And it is the largest topology that we can have. Okay, so it is a collection of all the subsets of X. You could see that we had all the subsets of X here. And tau 3 is not a topology defined on X. This is because, so I said that. So just from these three examples, I've introduced you to two important topologies that we have. The trivial topology or the indiscrete topology and the discrete topology. So take note of them. They are very important. You'll be using them. So now let's talk about open and closed sets in topological spaces since we also be using them. Okay. So when you take a topology tau, all the members in tau are what we refer to as open sets. So for instance, we have a set X here, we have a topology tau defined on X. So all the elements here are what we call open sets. So for this topology, the open sets are the empty set X, um, the, the empty set, the full set X, the set A, the set B, and the set AB. Okay, so those are what open sets are. They are very simple. Then we have a closed set. So a set A is said to be closed if it complements x minus a is open so for instance when we take the same topology we use to explain the open sets we said all these are open sets right so when you take phi, for instance it complement to be because it is x minus um phi, right will give you x which is open so that means that phi here, right, is closed, and x is also closed because when you take the complement of x, it will be x minus phi, which will always give you x, which is open. When you take the phi, um, the empty set, the complement of it will be x minus x, which will give you um, phi, which is always um, open. Then when you take BC, right? So BC here is also closed because the complement of it is S minus BC, which will give you A. And we know A is open here. So here too, AC is also closed because S minus AC will give you B, which is open here. And C is also closed because S minus C will give you AB, which is open. You know, you can see AB is open here. So from this, the closed sets are X, Phi, the set BC, the set AC, and the set C. All right? So... We get them from taking the complement, okay? When you take the complement and it can be found here, then it means it is closed. So that's what a closed set is. So now let's look at some propositions on open sets and closed sets. So it says if S style is in a topological space, then X and Phi are open sets, right? So we they are open set because in a topological space, Phi and X are members in every topological space, and so that's why they are open sets. Then the union of any either finite or infinite number of open sets is an open set. So this is from the definition of topology. You can't even say that. Then the intersection of any finite number of open sets is also an open set. Okay. So there are proofs to these propositions. You can later look at them if you want to. But with this course, we won't prove the propositions. Then we have closed sets. Okay, so 
if s star is any topological space then find s are closed set because their complements are always open the intersection of any either finite or infinite number of closed sets is a closed set and the union of any finite number of closed sets is also a closed set okay so now let's go to continuity as far as topological space are concerned so we let x and y be topological spaces a function f which maps x to y is continuous if f inverse of v is open in x for every open v in y so what this means is that f is continuous if the pre-image of every open set is open okay so if you still don't get the definition i'm going to explain that with examples and i'm sure after the explanation things are going to be clearer okay so let's take example for instance so we have a set x we have a set y we have topologies defined on x and y so this is a topology defined on x and this is a topology defined on what y so we have some functions which maps x to y and we are to show which of the following functions are continuous okay so this is the first function which maps x to y so you can see that we have x here we have y here so the domain and the code domain okay so we can see that a maps to y one sorry so that means f of a is equal to one b also maps to one so f of b equals one c maps to two f of c equals two and d also maps to two okay so what we ask ourselves is when we take y right which of the elements here are open so we can see that one and two are open so it's one and two which are open right so this one is open this two is also open so since they are open their pre-image should also be open so the open set in y like i said are this and that so for f to be continuous their pre-image should be open in x okay so when we take f inverse of y one right so you can see that we have a and b so we have the set a and b then we can see that a b can be found here so that means a b is open so we are good to go then when we take two the pre-image of two is c d so c d and we can see that C D is also contained in the topology D to define on X. That is C D it is contained here. So you can see that one and two were open in Y and they are pre-image. It does A B and C D are also open set in what X. So it means the function F is continuous. Okay. So in topology that's what we that's how we determine continuity so let's take a second function h so um we have h which maps x to y okay so you can see that a is to one so we have f of a equals one f of b equals two f of c equals two f of d equals three but you know three is not open in y so when you're looking for the open set whose pre-image should be open we don't consider theory because theory is not open it's not an open set so the open sets in y are one and two right so for gene to be continuous that means their pre-image should be open so let's just take the pre-image of one and the pre-image of two so we have f of a equals one so that means the pre-image of one will be equal to a and we can see that a is not found in our topology defined on x so that means a is not an open set so straight away we can see that j is not continuous but let's also take the p image of 
2, for instance. So the pre-image of 2 is going to give us CD. And CD is also not found. So the pre-image of um, 2 is going to give us BC, right? And BC is also not found in our topology defined on X. So this makes J not continuous. So J is not continuous on the topological space. So after discussing this, then we can establish these two statements, maybe with examples, OK? So you are seeing that one, every function from the discrete topology is continuous. And you know why? It's because when I have these two functions, all right, x and y. So because x is the discrete topology, it means that it co all the points, all the subsets of x are open sets, right? So when you take any open set from y, and you find its pre-image. The pre-image will always be open in X because X is a discrete topology. So it means that every subset of X is open. So that's the reason why we can say that every function from the discrete topology is continuous. You know, that was the reason why when we started, I talked about what a discrete topology is, what open, open sets are, what closed sets are, what continuity is. So that should tell you that, okay. So, the reason why this statement holds once again is because since the topology defined on X is discrete, any open set from Y, their pre image will be contained in that topological space because that topology is a discrete topology. So, it contains a subset, like it contains all the subsets of X, right? Then, the second one is every function to the discrete topology is continuous. And this is because if you take the um, function that we are talking about, you know this is the trivial topology that we have here. And here we have any function here. And you know with the trivial topology, the only open sets are the empty sets and the full set X itself. So as a result of that, we might have something here. Let's say one, two, three. And we can have anything here. All right? So you can see that the only open set from the trivial topological space is phi and x. And It's not likely that we will have all of them. We will have them here matching onto something. So as a result of that, these trivial, the trivial topology which has just open its open sets being phi and x, will always have its pre-image being um, contained in a topology defined on x. Okay. So that's the reason why we see that the function, every function to the trivial topology is continuous because when we take the trivial topology, the only open sets are these two. And these two will always have their pre-image being contained or being open in the topology defined on X. Okay, so this is some small review on topology. So in our next video, we will talk about some review on metric spaces. So thank you very much and see you in the next video.